the MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? The teller coming right back at you guys with another video leading up to UFC 251 as promised. And uh, of course, we had to do it now, especially because we got a new main event taking place. We got Jorge Masvidal stepping in for Gilbert Burns to take on Kamaru Usman. As you guys see, the new poster was just created. And it uh, looks like they just, you know, did a little MMA fortune teller style, little photo chop. They just chopped Burns out and uh, came out good. So, you know, we're, I'm excited. I, I'm really excited for this fight. I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree. Um, comment below. Let me know. Do most of you guys agree that we're more looking forward to this fight than uh, than the Gilbert Burns fight. I'm a big Gilbert Burns fan as well, but this is the fight that was supposed to be made from the get-go. Uh, this was the fight that was supposed to be taking place for the welterweight championship fight. So nevertheless, it still happens a little bit in, in a different situation than it than it would have been if it would have just you know uh, been set up from the get-go. But uh, you know we're gonna get into all those details here in a second. How long has Jorge Masvidal been training for this fight and uh, and whatnot? Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, from what I heard, Jorge Masvidal is making some good money uh, to step in there, you know, on, on short notice. And uh, he's happy for, for what the UFC has given him for this particular fight. It's not exactly what he wanted to make, uh, but nevertheless, he's making good money and he said he's happy with it. So um, I got to say this much. Every time I hear Jorge Masvidal talk, the, the dude is uh, on point. Uh, I, I like the way he carries himself and he seems like, to, he seems like he's a respectable guy. Uh, really cool dude. So... Uh, and, and you know what? Taking a fight like this on short notice is only going to do uh, wonders for his career. It's only, it's only going to be a benefit for him. Honestly, win, lose, or draw, this is this is going to be a, a benefit for his career, in my opinion. You know, you take a look at the line. Jorge Masvidal is coming in as a big dog here. Not a lot of people believe in uh, uh, the Masvidal hype uh, against a guy in Usman. Uh, you know, maybe the, the line's the way it is also because, you know, Masvidal didn't have a full camp. Uh, you know, uh, training for, the, for this championship bout. But we're going to get into all that. Uh, also, uh, as a lot of you guys know, Marcin Tybura has a new opponent. And uh, I will be get breaking down that fight here for you guys as well. If you guys are interested in that, hang around this video to the end um, or just skip to it. But uh, I'll put some timestamps here, uh, you know, below the video in the description. But going to be breaking down um, Marcin Tybura against his new opponent, Maxime Grishin. Uh, the Russian fighter who has fought over in PFL. I'm familiar with the dude, so uh, you know, re retouched some of the the fight tape on him as of recently, and uh, you know, kind of we'll see how the, that that matchup's going to take place here in a minute. Um, now, in regards to the uh, to the betting lines, as I said, Masvidal coming in as a dog. Money has been coming in on Alexander Volkanovsky. Um, a little bit of money came in on Patarion, uh, especially over on Bovada, minus two fifty now. Uh, I'm a Eunice. People are throwing money on Thug Rose, man. Some of these books, big time, as high as a minus two fifty now. So, uh, you know, that's crazy, right? Especially after she was knocked out in the first fight. But as we all know, right, she was dominating that fight in the beginning. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, and then, and then the new matchup, as we talked about, some money has been coming in on Tybura a little bit. Uh, now a little bit back on Grishin, but uh, the line is very close in that fight. So, um, you know, we'll see how that all goes. Uh, other than that, man, I hope you guys are all doing well. The teller is, is doing spectacular over here. I finally got my weights in uh, from Amazon. They, they, they just got over here a couple days ago. So I've finally been able to get my pump in. As you guys could, uh, could see in some of my previous videos, um, you know, I lost a lot of muscle mass uh, compared to what I used to look like. Um, you know, a little bit, a couple pounds here and there. But then again, a lot of you guys don't really know what I normally look like because I just started putting out these, these videos like this. Uh, these live videos on YouTube, at least not so much on Instagram, but for those of you guys that are familiar with me here on YouTube, uh, just started putting out these videos to you guys as this whole uh, pandemic started. So I haven't been able to go to the gym like I used to. Uh, you know, I've just been doing some calisthenic stuff, but I've been slacking and I'm sure a lot of you guys have too. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been eating the junk food and been slouching around. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work here on the computer and uh, now it's time to step it up. I got my weights. I got, I got the adjustable dumbbells. Uh, not the ones where you spin the clip, but ones where you could actually move the weights around. I like those better, uh, so I could use those with my, with a curl bar and whatnot. Uh, they you know they go up to like 55 pounds on each dumbbell, so I can get the shoulders in, the shrugs, and, and do different types of back workouts. So uh, I'm happy over here, man. I can get my pump in, and you guys will you know see my figure fill out uh, over the next couple uh, days and weeks here on uh, on the videos. I got my hair grown out again. 
uh, getting better with with the uh, with the cutting, so I don't got to cut it so short now. And then the teller's coming back in full full circle, uh, looking how he used to look. So things are good over here in regards to all that. Now, if you guys didn't catch out MMA Live discussion episode nine this past Thursday, I had Kama Worthy on the show. Uh, Kama Worthy was a spectacular guest. Uh, that dude is as legit. Obviously, he's proven himself inside the octagon. Uh, but now, you know, this guy, he has a cool personality too. So make sure you guys go check out that episode. Like the video. Uh, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's much appreciated, man. Subscribe to the channel. We're creeping up on 3,000 subscribers now. It's crazy, right? We're going from 1K to the 2K to the 3K. We're going to go all the way to 10K relatively soon. So I uh, appreciate all of you guys. Of course, you can catch me over at Instagram as well. MMA Fortune Teller underscore. And uh, yeah. I guess after uh, saying all that, it's time to talk about Kamaro Usman and Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Now, let's remember where this fight really started to gain a lot of traction, right? Uh, I think it was over the Super Bowl weekend where uh, they bumped into each other down over here in Miami and uh, started bumping their gums, talking a little bit of crap. Um, here's the thing, man. For those of you guys that forgot, Kamaro Usman was in a cast with his pinky all, you know, sticking out and whatnot. So I don't know what he was going to do uh, to Jorge Masvidal here. I mean, probably the same thing he's going to try to do this upcoming weekend, probably dive in on a single or something or a double and try to get a takedown. Um, but in, in that situation, uh, I got to say Jorge Masvidal had to be the favorite in that situation if nobody was there. Uh, it's, it's not a good thing to fight with the cast as uh, I've seen before. I mean, you can crack somebody in the head with it, but it's it's not really the same as, you know, having your, your fist behind you where you could step in and try to put someone out. So uh, Masvidal was the favorite there, in my opinion. But now, who's the favorite leading up to this uh, this fight taking place on Saturday? That's the real question, right? Um, uh, the books say it's around a minus 300. Um, I tend to agree. I do tend to agree. I got to lean Usman. Um, I'm going to get into how I think Masvidal may be able to spoil the party. But Usman, you know, he was training for this fight, right? He was training for a fight against Gilbert Burns, a five-rounder over in Abu Dhabi. Um, so, you know, he's in, he's in phenomenal shape, uh, as far as a stylistic change, really not that much of a stylistic change. Uh, Gilbert Burns, if anything, probably more dangerous, uh, with the submission game when Usman's going in for takedowns. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe Masvidal is a little bit more dangerous on the feet, but Gilbert Burns has looked nasty on the feet. So I don't know about that. In my opinion, I think Gilbert Burns is probably a, a, a more formidable opponent in my opinion. Um, now Masvidal, he has that X factor though, man, this guy, he's a dog, um, you know, he, he has nothing but fight in him and he's not scared of nobody. So he's, he's obviously stepping into the cage Saturday night thinking he's going to knock Usman out. If you heard some of the words that he's been saying, uh, the way he describes how he thinks this fight's going to go, the guy is definitely confident that he finishes Usman and puts him to sleep. Uh, not just the type of quick little knockout where the ref's pulling you off and the, and the fighter's getting back up. He said he wants to put him out. You know, he wants him to, to be waking up like a minute later. So now let's talk about what Jorge Masvidal needs to do. You know, if he wants to inflict that pain on Usman, if he wants to knock him out, put him to sleep, he's got to be able to stuff the takedown, right? That's first and foremost, because Usman is like a blanket. He's going to be pressuring you. He's going to be walking you down. He's going to be shooting in on your legs and on your hips. Um, here's the thing. Uh, if, if you guys haven't heard, Jorge Masvidal has been putting in work with this guy, Bo Nickel. Uh, this, is a, this guy is a Penn State wrestler. Uh, this is a guy that's bigger, stronger, and a better wrestler than Kamar Usman. At least those were the words that came out of Daniel Cormier's mouth. And, uh, you know, I really look up to Daniel Cormier and I hold, uh, you know, the words that come out of his mouth in high regard. I think he really knows his stuff, especially in regards to wrestling uh, and in MMA as, as well, too, but wrestling particularly. Um, so uh, if Daniel Cormier says that, I believe it. And, uh, you know, and if you get a, if you're able to to put in time with a guy like Bo Nickel, it's definitely going to to make you a better wrestler. There, there's no question about that. Of course, we talked about, uh, you know, Jorge Masvidal has put in a lot of time with uh, Colby Covington through the years. I know that those guys aren't cool anymore, but let's not forget the amount of time that those guys put on the mats together. And not just the mats, the amount of time those guys put in on the, on the, uh, in the living room, man, when these guys were living together. You know, you can go on YouTube, you guys can watch them battle it out. And uh, Colby would always dominate Jorge Masvidal. But the thing is, man, when you're just constantly grinding like that and grinding like that, that's how you become a better wrestler. And uh, I really, truly believe that Jorge Masvidal has really been working on his wrestling. And, uh, you know, like I said, if he's going to knock out Kamaru Usman, he's going to have to stuff those takedowns, make Kamaru pay for, the, for shooting in on him, make him get tired, and then style on him style on him on the feet. So, um, you know, it's a lot easier said than done. Kamaru Usman, 
uh, in my opinion, probably the, the best fighter. Uh, yeah, he is. I, I truly believe that. The best 170-pound fighter in the world, the best welterweight fighter in the world. He does carry the gold. Um, he took Colby Covington out. That was a fight that I did have Colby winning uh, up until he stopped him, but he did stop him, man, with only nine, uh, 50 seconds left in the fight. So, um, you know, before that, he took out Woodley. Uh, at this point in time, I think pretty much everybody in the top 10 takes out Tyrone Woodley, in my opinion. So, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if Woodley bounces back. Um, but, you know, other than that, not a lot of big names on, uh, on Usman's resume. I mean, took out Damian Maya. Uh, a lot of people put the blueprint out there to do that, man. If you're a wrestler, just, you know, don't let it go down to the mat and then, you know, outstrike Maya. Sergio Marais, crafty veteran. Sean Strickland, he's a stud. You know, Warley Alves does carry carry a victory over Colby Covington. Uh, pretty much a fluke, but, um, you know, Jorge Masvidal might be a step, you know, ahead of some of these guys over here. So, uh, but again, taking this fight on short notice, you got to wonder uh, the condition that Jorge Masvidal is coming into, uh, into this fight. Um we talked a little bit about that. And uh, if, if you look at what Jorge Masvidal has done as of recently, of course, you know, he just uh, took out Nate Diaz for the BMF title. That was a, a spectacular fight. In my opinion, there, there's no question, there's no type of asterisk in regards to that fight. He dominated Nate Diaz. Um, yeah, it was a bad stoppage in, in regards to the fight shouldn't have been stopped due to that cut. That's the New York commission. Uh, you know, they're not they're not up to date. You know, if that was in Las Vegas, that fight would have never been stopped. Um but let's not get it twisted. Jorge Masvidal was on his way to win a unanimous, you know, decision right there. Five round uh, victory for, you know, for Jorge Masvidal. Uh, the Ben Askren fight, that really put him on the map. That was one of the most spectacular knockouts of all time. The Darren Till knockout was beautiful. You know, going over to the UK, winning that fight on short notice. Uh, excuse me, not short notice. Going in there as a big underdog. Uh, that was a spectacular victory for him. And then after that fight, he did the two-piece in soda on Leon Scott. And uh, that really helped you know, get his, get him some uh, some notoriety, man. I'm, so, you know, these are this is what Jorge Masvidal has done as of recently to get to the spot that he's in now. Um, Stephen Thompson. Uh, let's not forget, Stephen Thompson completely outclassed him in that fight, but it's a complete different stylistic matchup than this one fight. Stephen Thompson is a world class striker, world class karate striker, and as good of a striker as Justin as Jorge Masvidal is. You saw over there in Colorado, elevation, his cardio is going to be ready to go. And I think this is a tough recipe for Jorge Masvidal to go out there and pull off the upset. You know, being that you know he really wasn't training for a five round war. You know, he might have been training. Not, but, but he wasn't not. really training for it. No, and uh, meanwhile, Usman's up. training with guys like Justin Gaethje. He's going to be in better shape. The fact that you got a wrestler versus striker that uh, that tends to be a bad matchup, in my opinion, with all these circumstances taking place. Um, saying all that, though, I would not be surprised if Masvidal, uh, you know, upsets Usman. He spoils the party. I would not be um, shocked at all. Uh, Masvidal is an excellent striker. He's been working on the wrestling. Maybe somehow, you know, he really is in good shape. He can stuff those takedowns and uh, really tire Usman out, you know, if Usman can't get those takedowns. And then I do believe that Masvidal will be more fluid on the feet and, and he will, uh, you know, outpoint uh, Usman on the feet, even if he doesn't knock Usman out. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's a way, that's a couple ways that Masvidal could try to win the fight. Maybe a decision, maybe he gets the flash knockout, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Um, you know, the line, as we talked about, you know, it's a, it's a pretty hefty line, man. Minus 300. Um, you know, if you feel like throwing some dog money on, on Masvidal, if you're a believer, I mean, it's paying out good. It seems like Masvidal is throwing some money on himself. That's that's the word on the street, that he's putting some money on himself. He likes to do that. He's a better. Maybe we'll get Masvidal on the show one day. We'll talk about some MMA betting, betting since that's what he likes. And... Um, but props to him, you know, if he's putting money on himself, that you got to respect that. You know, he believes in himself. And, um, but I, I just tend to believe Usman's going to win this fight. But that's a, that's a steep line. This entire card, you know, has a lot of a lot of heavy favorites. Um, maybe not heavy favorites, a lot of moderate favorites. A lot of minus 220s, 200s, you know, <clears throat> minus 300s. So, uh, but the official selection for the fight has to be Kamaru Usman, in my opinion. Um, you know, if you're picking Jorge Masvidal, comment below, call it now. You know, it's one of those ones. You got to call that now. So... That's the official selection. <clears throat> now, before we get into uh, the other fight, you know, if you guys are still hanging around now, you want to hear that that breakdown. Uh, Maxime Grishin taking on Marcin Tybura. We're going to get to that here in a second. Um, as we see, it's basically a pick 'em fight. Uh, just want to touch upon this real quick. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky is not buying the BS. Max Holloway was trying to say he was only doing Zoom training uh, for this uh, this title bout, and I'm not a believer in that as well. Uh, you know, you don't go from being a champion, getting dethroned 
to uh, he's not put in some real work for the belt. I don't believe it in the least bit. Still got Volkanovski to win that fight regardless how if Max was training, um, you know, back in the gym and whatnot or wh however he was doing it. Um, but Daniel Cormier pretty much debunked that as well because he he basically called Max Holloway out saying he knew that he was training inside his house. He had the match there. He was working on his grappling. So um, just want to touch upon that. And then uh, yeah, well uh, let's let's talk about the the other fight that we got here. Let's pull it up real quick. Maxime Grishin, the Russian fighter. This guy's a tough dude. Uh, not overly impressed with what he brings to the table. I was re-watching some of uh, his previous fights here in PFL and whatnot. Um, one that I just saw earlier again today was the, the Jordan. Uh, was it was it Jordan Johnson, uh, the ex UFC fighter? Yeah, uh, Jordan Johnson, Division One wrestler, tough dude. Um, it, it says that he won here, um, but it's it's really confusing, man. If you if you watch that fight, it's actually really confusing because if you go on YouTube, you watch the fight, uh, it was actually, oh, excuse me, they fought twice. That's why, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, it was a draw. It was a draw. So that, that's where the mistake came. This is the second time they fight. So he did win the first time that they threw down. Uh, the second one I just saw today, Jordan Johnson was really, you know, just leeching on him, holding on him, got a couple of takedowns. Uh, Maxime was really just trying to, you know, get away from him, use his striking. But, uh, you know, he didn't really make Jordan pay the way that you would like to see him, you know, the way Jordan was shooting in. He should have been elbowing him, trying to make him pay a little bit more. He's not the most dangerous fighter from what I've really seen. I mean, in specific fights, he looks dangerous, but uh, against what type of level of competition, you know, you got to wonder. You look at, look into some of these guys. Um, in my opinion, he's just a, he's an overall tough fighter, um, and... Uh, He's a solid dude. He's definitely worthy of being in the UFC. I, I definitely believe that to be true. Uh, I'm just not overly impressed with what he brings to the table. And I'm obviously not overly impressed with what his opponent brings to the table either. You know, Marcin Tybura, this is a guy, you know, you heard my, my breakdown, uh, you know, on him and, and his first opponent. Um, and, you know, against yeah, Alexander Romanov, Romanov and uh, I picked Romanov to win that fight. And, I'm going to pick uh, Maxime Grishin to win this fight as well. I mean, I'm not going to pick uh, Tybura he either, here either. He is coming off a victory against Sergey Spivak, but Spivak is not overly impressive. Uh, the Augusto Saka fight, you know, getting knocked out by him in the first round the way he did. Uh, you know, you only look at you look at his victories as of recently. Spivak, Stefan Struve, Andrei Arlovsky. Not trying to throw shade at any of those guys, but Stefan Struve is a guy that never really elevated his game, um, you know, to the level uh, of that a lot of people thought that he had the ability to do. You know, he was in the game. The fight came early. People thought he was going to grow into his body, mature, and be a real threat to the division. But he really never did. You know, he had that problem where he retired. He had heart issues. Uh, and he came back and Tybura beat him. So whatever. Andre Arlovsky, you know, he he's lost some fights. You know, Andre's up there in age. Sergey Spivak, not impressive either. I think Maxim Grishin can, can, can go out there and I think he could show up and take this fight. Wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden Tybura shows up though and, and you know, takes Maxim... Uh, our styles on Maxime on the feet. Tybura can be flashy at times with the striking. He's not a bad striker. Uh, he's flexible. He can throw head kicks up there. His boxing's not bad. Um, he's just a little flaky to me, man. I, I bring up that Derek Lewis fight again, too. Uh, the Shamil fight, losing to these two guys, too, the way he did. So, you know, he, he's, I got to go with Maxime Grishin here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Grishin. The line is pretty much a pick him, too. So, um, you know, that fight, you can, uh, if, you, if you feel comfortable in either guy, you know, you can put some money in, in on him. So official play is Maxime Grishin. All right. All right. So yeah, man, we touched upon the two new bouts that are going to be taking place Saturday. Now, again, the fight companion is going to be going down right here. Um, I have it here on YouTube and I'll be filming right here. I have the fights up over here and uh, I hope you guys all join. Um, it's going to be a good one. Every fight companion, the numbers are going up and up and up. So hopefully we'll, we'll start to creep up to 100 people in the chat. I know a lot of people have already told me they're going to be there. They're excited and uh, they'll be joining the show and whatnot. Make sure you guys join as well. Um, right now, I have one play already locked in. Um, I did have a play on Gilbert Burns. I'll let you guys know right now. I had a play on Gilbert Burns. I had the dog over Usman. Uh, so right now, that that fight, that fight was scrapped. I only have one play locked in. But uh, there's, other, there's two plays I have... Right here, I have all my notes up and whatnot. It's just one click away from locking it in to be an official play. It's looking like I'm going to have three plays locked in for this card. If you guys are interested, reach out to me. Shoot me a message uh, on Instagram. DM me. 
Um, if you have email, if you don't have Instagram, email me MMA for MMA fortune teller at gmail.com. Uh, shoot me an email. Instagram is the best way to get a hold of me, but either way, if you don't have one, and um, you know, you, if you guys are interested in my official plays, uh, I'll, I'll give you my pricing and whatnot. I'll hook you guys up with a good price uh, if anybody's interested. And um, yeah, that, that pretty much wraps up the uh, the little video we did here today. Um, hope all you guys are being safe out there. Um, I'm definitely excited for Saturday. And uh, oh, Thursday MMA live discussion. Um, we, we got a good one lined up for you guys. Just let me confirm the, with the guests before I, I officially tell all you guys. Um, but just to throw out some names to you guys. Um, we, we got actually, you know what? Just just stay tuned. But uh, we got a guest that I'm really excited to have on. Uh, I'm, I'm in talks right now with a legend, a legend in the game, uh, a potential Hall of Famer. Uh, he's t talking about coming on the show whenever whenever I'm ready to have him. But I'm going to push that off a little bit because there's a fighter I want to bring on this upcoming Thursday that's uh, a little bit more relevant in the game right now, coming off a major knockout victory uh, as of recently. So you guys guess who's coming on the show this Thursday and uh, coming off a nasty, brutal knockout. And um, I got him and then I got some other exciting fighters I've been talking with too. So stay tuned. MMA live discussion. Join us Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time time zone and uh and that's gonna wrap up the show i appreciate all you guys please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and uh, you guys all take care man signing out the teller the mma fortune teller the teller the teller the teller the teller the teller the teller, the teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.